an Intel 4 core processor, 16 gig of RAM, 512 gig of storage for $249. That sounds pretty good. MiniXP.com, they sent us this B-Link U59 for a review. So let's take a close look and see if they cut any corners to get to that price. In the box we get two HDMI cables, one 26 centimeters, the other one one meter, a power supply, a VESA mount. We get a SATA cable as well as screws to install a two and a half inch drive. And there's a user manual and hard disk installation guide. It is 12.4 centimeters wide, 11.3 centimeters deep, 4.3 centimeters tall and weighs 320 grams. At the front of the unit, here you can wipe the BIOS in case you made any mistakes with the settings. We have a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port. This one is 10 gigabit. The port on the right was a little bit flaky with 10 gigabits. Uh, the connection would drop out, but it tested fine at 5 gigabits. We have a USB-C interface benchmarked at 5 gigabits per second and it also carries video 4K 60 Hz RGB. We've got a TRS headphone slash microphone connector, power button here with a white LED. At the back we have two 5 gigabit USB ports, two gigabit Ethernet ports, they use a chipset from Realtek, and then we have two HDMI ports. And uh, I had to do a little bit more testing here. So at RGB, at the RGB color space, they can do 4K30, and they can do also 4K30 at YCBCR444. If you want 4K60, it only works in YCBCR 420. So that means that the rear HDMI ports are not suitable for connecting 4K displays to do desktop work. Uh, but if you've got a screen up to 1440p, then that is just fine. And here goes the power supply. The machine has Wi Fi 5 from Intel and Bluetooth. I tested copying files from my NAS and got around 30 megabytes per second. Four screws at the bottom of the machine gets us inside. We have dual channel memory, two 8 gigabyte modules, that is brilliant. And they're running at 2666 megahertz with CL19. The memory modules, there seem to be no name. We have a M.2 with 512 gigabytes. This one is connected through the SATA 3 interface. Here are the benchmarks. So just keep in mind that this is not a NVMe SSD. I've installed a two and a half inch Western Digital Blue SATA SSD and it is connected through SATA, not USB. This is good. We're getting full speed. The machine comes with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. I downloaded all the Windows updates, also the latest Intel driver updates for the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and graphics. I set the power profile to high performance and now let's run some benchmarks. In Cinebench R15, we're getting 370 for the multi-threaded and 106 for the single-threaded test. In R20, 827 and 234 points. And in Cinebench R23, we're getting 1,398 and 608 for the single-threaded score. Let's check out power consumption and temperatures running Cinebench R23. The machine pulls 21 watts. The cores run at 2.8 gigahertz. I saw a maximum temperature of 83 degrees and an average of 80. Running the single core test, the machine pulls 14 watts at the wall. It turbos up to 2.9 gigahertz. The maximum temperature was 78 and the average was 69. The machine is extremely quiet. It doesn't have any CPU fan sensors exposed in Windows, but in the BIOS we can see a reading of just over 2000 RPM. And I found this machine to be basically inaudible. It is extremely quiet. So I appreciate that B-Link uh, sacrificed higher temperatures for less noise. Let's check out the graphics. In Ice Storm, we're getting 50,747. In CloudGate, 6. 1525. We have a skydiver result of 3915 and in Firestrike we're getting 1026. 
In terms of gaming performance, we have to adjust our expectations. This is Shadow of the Tomb Raider 720p, lowest details. It doesn't even hit 20 FPS, so this is a game that's definitely too demanding for this mini PC. It does a little bit better in Strange Brigade, also running at 720p with the low details. Almost 30 FPS. Um, that actually surprised me a little bit. This game runs with the Vulcan API. The machine does a lot better with older games. This is Dirt 3 running at 1080p with ultra low details and we're getting around 80 FPS. That is actually pretty good. So older games should work just fine on this machine. This is Portal running at 1080p with all the details maxed out and we're getting over 60 FPS. So yes, you can play games on this mini PC, just not the latest and greatest, but you might have a huge backlog catalog of Steam games and GOG games that are perfectly playable on this machine. The graphics processor is fairly modern. It can do a lot of GPU acceleration. For example, it supports H.264 as well as H.265, but also VC1 and VP9. So this will do a good job at being used as a media center. So guys, there you have it. Not a bad machine, but what do you think for $249? Is this a good deal? Let us know down below in the description. And if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I will do my best to answer them. And if you want to see more mini PC videos, I will put some icons on the screen for you to click on. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.